in again. So we're going to start talking about solving trigonometric equations here. And we sort of have to make a choice, sort of pedagogically, how complicated we want to get. I'm going to take a cue from when I learned this material and say not that complicated. I don't want to be messing around with a lot of trigonometric identities, for example. But if we have something like the cosine of x equals one half, we need to be able to solve that. Or like if we have something slightly more complicated, say this, stuff like this is on the level of stuff that we want to be able to solve after we've successfully completed this class. So I'm gonna sort of start with relatively straightforward equations, and then we'll work our way up. So the cosine of x equals one half. Often you'll have additional information, like often you're told something like, x is between 0 and 2 pi, but I'm not going to give you that information, and that means that we're going to have infinitely many solutions. And the inverse trig functions, or Alternatively, maybe our knowledge of the cosine will give us one solution, and then we'll have to figure out what other solutions are. Um, so can you give me a solution to this? Um. Okay. So I know it's kind of kind of annoying memorizing these things, but you really should. The cosine of pi over six, pi over three, pi over four. The cosine of pi over three is one half. So is sorry. Well, no, yes, the cosine of pi over three is one half which makes pi over three a solution. And let me um, get our calculator warmed up. And while we're waiting for that, let me also navigate the Desmos. Online students or students watching these recordings aren't seeing anything, I know, but we will once I start sharing screens. So for the moment, let's just double check. First, make sure we're in radian mode. We are. Then cosine of pi over three is indeed one half. Now, this is not the only solution. We talked about this when we were talking about inverse trig functions. If you look at the cosine of x, and you look at mm, one half, 
there are a bunch of solutions. In <laughs> fact, infinitely many solutions. So our goal now will be to find all of the solutions. And finding all of the solutions is going to be a mix of two things. We're going to use reference angles. And we are going to use periodicity. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll start with reference angles. Let's draw an axis. And maybe a unit circle. Let's say, well, here. is pi over three, and its cosine is one half. Now we'll look at the angles whose reference angle is pi over three. And as a reminder, what, what reference angles are, They are angles in the second quadrant such that this angle is pi over three, and then there are angles in the third quadrant such that this angle is pi over three and angle was in the fourth quadrant such that that angle was pi over three. <clears throat> Those three angles in the second, third and fourth quadrant are the angles that have pi over three as reference angles. And now I'm going to, I've probably sort of overcrowded this, uh, this screen. So let me erase some of that. So for example, the angle in the second quadrant that has pi over three as a reference. What is that angle? So this is the angle we're looking for. It should have pi over three as a reference angle. Well, let's think it out. How many radians are there in a straight line? That is an angle like that. That's correct. There are pi radians in a straight line. So if this angle over here is pi over three, and you know this angle here and this angle here 
together make pi radians, then what's this angle here? It would be two pi over three. And I'm going, just because this is the very first example, I'm going to jot all of these angles down and then we'll talk about them. But notice that there's a big question mark over two pi over three, suggesting that maybe this is not going to be what do what we want it to. What about... <clears throat> What about the angle in the third quadrant that has pi over three as a reference angle? What angle is that? Four pi over three. Okay, I've heard four pi over three and two pi over three. I agree with one of them. Let's, let's think this out. So a straight line, we already used that. Let's uh, do, I guess. A straight line would be pi. <clears throat> so if this angle is pi, and then that angle is an additional pi over three, this angle of pi and this angle of pi over three is going to be pi plus pi over three, which is four pi over three. And again, I'm going to put a question mark above that. So again, I've erased a little more than I wanted to. So what about the angle in the fourth quadrant? that has pi over three as a reference. What would that be? Five pi over three. I've heard five pi over three. I agree with that. Um, the way you can work this out is that there are two pi radians in a full circle. So this angle, together with pi over three, make a full circle a full circle is two pi. <laughs> And then when you solve for the angle, we get five pi over three. And now let's 
address, let me first uh, turn to a less eye searing ink. And now let's address those question marks. Um, two angles with the same reference <clears throat> angle almost have the same sine and the same cosine, but maybe not quite. What can, what's the difference between the sines and the cosines of these four angles? Your sines, right? So if it's in the first quadrant, triple is positive, and then I'll be negative positive or negative negative, and then positive negative. Yes, that's exactly correct. These angles have the same sines and the same cosines, except that maybe some of them are positive and maybe some of them are negative. So we want the cosine of x. to be positive. So I'm going to start crossing angles out. Anything that would give us a negative cosine is not a solution to this problem. And as you as you correctly stated, the um the angles that give us negative cosines are the angles in the second quadrant and angles in the third quadrant. So we've crossed two of those solutions out because they're not really solutions. Five pi over three is five. Five pi over three is in the fourth quadrant. It has a positive sign. So we found two solutions. And what the reference angles are doing here, the reference angles are giving us solutions that are between zero and two pi. So pi over three and five pi over three are two solutions between zero and two pi. Let's unselect, oops. Was it the cosine? It was the cosine, right? So pi over three and five pi over three. Well, an infinite number of solutions to go, but the good news is that once we found the solutions between zero and two pi, we're basically done with this problem. What we're going to use next is this concept of periodicity. All of the trig functions are periodic. Um, the cosine is periodic with period two pi, which is a fancy way of saying that the cosine of any number is the same as the cosine of that number plus two pi, which is the same as the cosine of that number 
thus four pi and so on. into infinity and also is the same of the cosine of that number minus two pi is the same as the cosine of that number minus four pi and so on. So, if one of these things is not hot pink, uh, as soon as Zoom lets me move this thing, I will select a different color. Um, okay, Zoom is being super uncooperative for being such a, you know, the piece of technology that practically everyone uses. Um, I think if I stop the screen sharing and then go back, to Zoom, I think that will fix it, maybe. And I don't know about doing an entire lecture in hot pink. I think that might be trying students a bit much, but it's somehow... Okay, I think if I... Okay, fixed it. All right, sorry for that little technology snafu. What I was saying then is that if a cosine of some number equals one half, well, the cosine of that number plus two pi is one half, and the cosine of that number plus four pi is one half, and so on. So now that we've found that the cosine of pi over three is one half, the cosine of pi over three plus or minus any integer multiple of two pi also equals one half. And now that we know that the cosine of five pi over three equals one half, the cosine of five pi over three plus or minus multiples, integer multiples of two pi also equals one half. So although we have an infinite number of solutions, we do not have to list them one by one. That would be a problem. Instead, we find this finite set of solutions using reference angles. And then we add or subtract multiples of 2 pi to get all of our solutions. So the way this is... Um, Working, if we go <clears throat> to Desmos, let's uh, zoom, let's mess with this zoom a little. 
so that maybe X is going a bit bigger. So here's pi over three. Here's pi over three plus two pi. Here's pi over three plus six, four pi. Pi over three plus six pi. Pi over three minus two pi. Pi over three minus four pi. And so on. And the, oh, I didn't know that zooming would uh, do that, but fine. Here's five pi over three. Five pi over three plus two pi. Five pi over three plus four pi. Five pi over three minus two pi. And so on. So we get between the two of them, we get all of the solutions. The, the solutions on where this function is going up, this solution and this solution and this solution and so on come from five pi over three. The solutions on the downward slopes come from pi over three. And let's do another example. I mean, and we're going to want at some point to complicate things, but it sounds like people are maybe still um, struggling a little with the reference angles. So let's do an example that's basically just like this, except maybe, maybe we'll make things slightly harder for ourselves. Uh, well, first, just for variety, if we did cosine last time, let's do sine this time. Maybe we'll make things slightly harder for ourselves by um, having some ugly decimals. <laughs> so the sine of x equals one fifth is not something we know. Um, we can solve the sine of x equals zero, one, the square root of two over two, the square root of three over two, and one half. Any, we can do that mentally, or at least in theory we can. Um, any number other than that, you have to reach for your calculator. Not the have sign, but the arc sign. So inverse sign one fifth. We're gonna get a messy decimal. Let's keep three decimal faces. Zero point two zero one. So here's a solution, but there are infinitely many. Again, often you're told, you know, I don't want infinite solutions. I just want solutions in some interval, but that is not the case here. So we'll give all of them. All right, 
And now we'll look, and I won't write all of them down this time, but to find other solutions. Let me at least write them down correctly if I can. To find other solutions whose sign is one fifth, we ought to be looking at the angles that have point two zero one as their reference angle. Now I have four angles drawn on the board. This angle we definitely want. It's what we got when you, we used the inverse trig function. Of the other three angles, I should erase two of them and only look at one of the remaining angles. So, which should I erase and which should I look at? Erase positive ones and look at the negative ones. So, because it's arc signs. So, arc sign can give you either positive or negative solutions. What I'm, what I'm trying to get at here, I mean, go well, I erased it very cleverly, but here we had <clears throat> angles in all four of the quadrants. But we erased two of them. We crossed out two pi over three, and we crossed out four pi over three. So we wound up with the angle in the first quadrant and the angle in the fourth quadrant. So what I'm trying to ask is, why did we cross off the angles that we crossed off and not the other angles? Why did we keep pi over three and five pi over three? Because those angles, the cosine is positive. Because the cosine is positive. So we're looking, we were looking for the cosine of x equals positive one half. And if we went to our calculator and took a look at one of these angles we crossed out, say two pi over three, the cosine of two pi over three is negative one half. And lengthwise, <laughs> the cosine of four pi over three would be negative one half. So what the reference angles are doing, the reference angles are giving us the right number. They're giving us the one half here, but they might not be giving us the right positivity. Um, they must, thanks for some of these, the cosine will be negative one half instead of positive one half, and those we crossed off. So returning to this example, we want the sign to be positive one half, so which of these angles should we erase? Bottom two. The bottom two. Here in the third quadrant, the sign is negative. And here in the fourth quadrant. The 
the sign is negative. So if we want the sign to be positive, we're looking at the angles in the first two quadrants. Now, as for this angle, in the second quadrant, this is something I think we're going to have to reach for our calculator for. But how do we find that angle? So since it's in decimal, you know, in figures of pi, we just take the two pi, multiply it, right? Pi times two, and then we'll subtract away the 0 0.201. Um, I liked some of that answer. Um, I liked the part about subtracting the 0 0.201. I don't think we need to do any multiplication. The situation here is that this entire angle is pi. There are pi radians in 180 degrees. And of that pi, here's 0 0.201. So pi is made up of this angle, 0 0.201, together with this angle, the angle that we're looking for, so no multiplication, but you're right. That we do want to subtract this. To figure out what this angle is. So pi minus Point two zero one pi minus point two zero one. So we were keeping our uh, three decimal places. So two point nine four one. And now we have this angle in the second quadrant and this angle in the first quadrant. And those are the only solutions between zero and two pi. The third and the fourth quadrant are out because um, the third and the fourth quadrant would give negative signs. And the sign is supposed to be positive one fifth. And making allowances for the fact that we're going to have some rounding error, let's check that the sign of two point nine four one, there's going to be some rounding error, but one fifth is 0.2, so this should be around 0 0.2, 0 0.11, 0 0.199. So we have found two solutions, <laughs> making allowances for rounding error. And now just like 
in the previous problem, in the previous problem, it was the cosine, but the sine is also periodic, and the sine also has two pi as its period. So zero point two zero one plus or minus two pi n. The integer multiples of two pi. Um, a lot of times you won't see plus or minus. And that's because you can have negative integers and negative integers give subtraction. I just like to put it there to emphasize that we can go in both directions. We can add, we can subtract. Dr. Moses. Yeah. So if we were looking for sine of X is equal to negative one over five, then we would just want the bottom two instead of the top two. Yeah, that's that's exactly correct. Okay. That's me. That me. Um. So it's actually slightly, well, let's see what happens. That sine of x equals negative one-fifth. So what's going to happen here, I believe, is that the arc sign is going to give us a negative number. The inverse sign of negative one fifth. So it's giving us negative point two zero one. But I actually wouldn't use that negative number. I'd say, okay, we'll find the answers between a zero and two pi, and then we'll add and subtract the multiples of two pi. So instead of this negative point two zero one. I would use that um, two pi minus point two zero one two. I minus point two zero one six point zero eight two and then I would find find the angle in the second quadrant that had point two zero one as the reference angle, that will be pi plus point two zero one. Mm 
Avengers will be in the third and fourth quadrant. Right. You're just not using it. Right, that's correct. Three point uh, three four three. <laughs> and then I would add and subtract the multiples of two pi. And this is, I mean, it's it's mostly just convention that you normally use positive numbers between zero and two pi when you can. Um, but it's also to make sure, for example, well, to make sure that we get all of the solutions. Um, because finding all of the solutions between zero and two pi is a very concrete first step, as opposed to, well, we find this a solution that's not between zero and two pi, and then we find a solution that is between zero and two pi, and then there's a third solution that's between zero and two pi, except that we don't need it because when we add the multiples of, I, I just think it's cleaner to um, find the solutions between zero and two pi. Your solutions will always be on the same position of the period, right? So like on the graph, when we did cosine, it was on, I think the left side of the maximum. Yeah. Peak, so they will always be on the left side of that period. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the way this is working is that one of these solutions will give us the ones on the left side the other solution will give us the ones on the right side. All right, 150, we'll pick up here um, tomorrow, well, Friday, I mean. <laughs>